All right, let's go ahead and talk about 2011 when they, they started doing the dredging project here at the port. Problem was the Army Corps of Engineers were adamant about not having them pour or discharge any of the sludge material or limestone or anything else like that into the gypsum stack. And simply because the Army Corps of Engineers had a, had a clue of that liner was not going to hold up to what they were dumping into there. So eventually what happened is with HRK, Artiman Associates, and the FDEP, the FDEP and Artiman Associates convinced HRK that it was okay that there was a 0.009% chance that there would be any kind of leak or anything else like that that would cause contamination or anything. So they pretty much convinced HRK into utilizing the gypsum stack as a dumping site. The Army Corps of Engineers actually signed off and said we will not be held liable for this. So FDEP tried before the Army Corps of Engineers actually said no we're not doing this and they signed off on saying that they're not they're not allowing it the FDEP and Artiman Associates were trying to go above those engineers at the Army Corps of Engineers and go to the secretary of the Army Corps of Engineers and trying to get okay that way so they were trying to go around these engineers that were saying no this is not a good idea so anyway, once the Army Corps of Engineers signed off, and there's emails stating this, and I'll put these emails in this video, and I'll have links at the end of this series, I'll have links to everything. So you can go and do your own investigation work and everything else like that. So they went ahead and started to do this dredge project. Mind you that they did not pull the proper insurance for this. The Port Manatee Authority or the FDEP did not pull the proper uh, insurance to perform this dredge. So, needless to say, they started dredging the port and they started taking the sludge material and all that byproduct, limestone, everything, and dumping it into the gypsum stack. Well, what happened was, the, as they were doing that, they had an excavator on site, a couple of excavators, and one of them got stuck and the other one actually fell into the gypsum stack, which caused a major rip in the liner as you'll see in this picture there's multiple pictures of this I had to pull them off the internet I apologize for the clarity of them but as you can see there's a giant rip in the the liner that they have there so here they are there they fix the liner and they tell they tell HRK well we should be good there's not going to be any more issues well Knowing full well that Artiman Associates also used the same liner with Command Co over in Plant City at a mosaic location. And they had major failure on the seams, they had rips, so they knew that this particular liner was not going to hold up. So needless to say, there was over 165 million gallons spilled in 2011. To this current day, they were, are in a lawsuit right now. HRK is going after the FDEP, Artiman Associates, Command Co, and CDM contractors because they were led to believe that this was all going to be okay. Now, mind you, HRK is not a land management company. They are a hedge fund company. So they were brought into this thinking that this was going to be a good investment using the gypsum stack as a uh, as a dump site for, for the for the the uh, dredging material and they also were told that they were they'll be able to develop it to be able to have a port terminal for rail and for truck so they were seeing dollar signs when they signed up for this unfortunately the FDEP and Artiman Associates were trying to sell the gypsum stacks as assets and not liabilities and we all know that they're liabilities so in 2011 of course, the government blamed HRK Holdings, sued them. HRK Holdings had to file for bankruptcy. If you're not seeing a pattern here, there's definitely a pattern to where there was an emergency, there was an emergency purchase in 2001 by the FDEP 
that had a receivership from a lawyer in Lutz. And they bought this land, they bought that land, an emergency purchase for $92.2 million. Now, as I mentioned before, CDM contractors had a con, they won a contract with the FDP, FDEP in 2003 for $53 million. And folks, I hate to say this, but I can't find anywhere where CDM did a ton of work. I can't find it. It may be somewhere, and I may not have dug far enough, but there's definitely, they definitely got paid for doing some kind of work, but I'm not sure what it is because it's not showing up anywhere. Um, so, needless to say, 2011 was really kind of the big start for all of this. And as it continued, it just continued on and on and on. And they kept the same liner in that gypsum stack, knowing full well that, uh, that this liner is going to fail. Bring us to future. We know that the liner was failing. Actually, they knew for over a year. HRK Holdings was, was telling the FDEP, we have an issue, we have an issue. There's a leak, there's a leak, there's a leak. The FDEP did nothing about it. So, we're gonna stop here, and then we're gonna get into going towards present day, but I just wanted to give you an outline of what happened in 2011 is almost a mere image of what's happening now except for the dredging aspect of it uh, there's fingers pointing where they're where they're wagging the dog saying well we're blaming this person and we're blaming this company we have no idea why hrk holdings is part of this i think everyone scratches their head what made sense with the um having hrk come in and do this more than a decade ago how did that happen well yeah you do the fact is is that they are part of it because you sold them on this land. You sold them and said, this is what you can do with it. This is what we're gonna do. You're gonna make millions of dollars for allowing us to use the gypsum stack as a dump site. So what they were trying to do was cover their tracks, CYA. So when people say, well, HRK is to blame, HRK is to blame, and the FDEP comes out and says, well, we're suing HRK for $47 million. For what? FD, FDEP has been part of this from the very, very beginning, very beginning. And the, the secretary of the FDEP that was in charge at the time was Noah Valenstein. Now, all of a sudden he, he gives up his job. He resigns in May 2021, uh, tw May 28, 2021. So he gives up his job. He resigns. The FDEP the, the farther I dig into this, the scarier it is because the fact is is that there's a lot of money exchanging hands. I mean, tens of millions of dollars. When this is all sudden done, it's going to probably be closer to two, $200 million, if not more. Uh, but the reason why I'm doing this, and I want to thank everybody for the support, is because it doesn't. we don't need to just let this go. Because right now, the Bay is really doing well. We don't need to let this go. We need to actually stay on top of this and make sure that we help we hold people accountable for for this will it put crosshairs on me possibly but you know what this is the one of the best estuaries in the world and here they are nonchalantly just dumping water because that's the easiest thing to do the least expensive thing let's put it like that it's the least expensive thing to do for the dep for the port for everybody involved government wise because they all have sovereign immunity so it's easy for them to say, well, let's go ahead and dump it. The worst case scenario, we get sued for $200,000. And it all goes to lawyers anyway. So clash action suits and all this other stuff isn't going to do anything. Isn't going to stop them. We, we need to, and I don't know what's going to stop them. I have no clue right now. No clue whatsoever what we can do to stop these people from doing what they're doing. If anybody has any ideas, please let me know. Class action lawsuits are not the way to go. They've never, they've never stopped anything in the past. Um, we need to hold people accountable. And, and I've got more names that are going to be coming out that are going to be held accountable or should be held accountable for this. There's people's crew, careers that have been ruined by, by this. There's people that have been getting death threats because of this. And personally, you know, it, it's a shame.
because they're actually directing their anger towards the wrong people. And we'll get more into that. So anyway, I'm going to get back to fishing because it's a rare time that I took off a little bit to go do some fishing. So we're going to go ahead and film that too. But I just wanted to make this part of it and, um, and just give you more of an insight of what's going on. So let's go ahead and get back to do some fishing. Thank you again for watching. I really appreciate all the support. If you have any information that you want to give, please contact me. I've had several people contact me and I appreciate it. So if you have information, you have pictures, anything, please contact me and let me know.